you are not an accident. You may not have been born under the most planned or perfect predicament. However, you are not an accident. You were born with purpose, for purpose, and on purpose. You were created with intention. And because you are a creation of intention and with purpose, you should live every single moment of your life with intention and purpose. In this episode of Bishop Littman Live, I'm going to show you three aspects that Paul says we all ought to have in order to live an intentional life. You're watching Bishop Littman Live. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome back to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. I'm so excited to share these teachings and time of meditation and study with you. If this is your first time to Bishop Littman Live, welcome to the family. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel at Dr. A. Reginald Littman on YouTube. Also, if you're listening to the podcast, we're excited to have you. Be sure that you subscribe to the podcast so you'll get notifications every time new content is loaded. Hey, everyone, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It's an awesome time that we're living in. We're dealing with some very difficult, dark, and dismal days. Yet and still, we are reminded every single second of our lives that we were born with intention and we must live with intention. But what exactly does intentional living look like? Well, let's look at the third chapter of the book of Philippians as we continue in our series on peace in the midst of it all. And today we're talking about intentional living from Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 in the Living Bible translation. There we find these words. Dear brothers, pattern your lives after mine. And notice who else lives up to my example. Now, this is Paul talking here, and he's telling us very simply that there is a pattern for which we must live, that we are not left without resources in this life. We are not left to our own devices, and neither are we left to fend for ourselves. But in fact, God has put and placed patterns for living with intention before us. We just have to observe and follow the right pathway, and then we too will live a life of intention. And in this particular verse, Paul says, dear brothers, pattern your lives after mine. Now here's our first point today. Number one, to live with intention, we have to embrace godly relationships. Embrace godly relationships. Notice Paul says to us, my brethren, and here he is reminding us that we are all a part of a greater family, that humanity is a part of a great divine family. We are not islands to ourselves. We all need each other. We all need connection. We all need community. And here Paul opens up this verse by saying, dear brothers. Now in this, Paul is reminding us of the need to embrace godly relationships. Notice, not dear people, not dear strangers, not dear citizens, but dear brothers. We meet, need to be mindful that we are a part as humanity of a large fraternal order of divine creations and divine beings. Here's what I'm simply saying, that none of us are any greater than anyone else, yet none of us are any less than anyone else. We are all on an equal living level playing ground and we all need the support and the resource of this gift called each other. When we understand that we are not to be isolated, that we were not made to be an island, that we were not made to just be by ourselves and to ourselves, but in fact, God came up with the idea of unity. In Genesis 1 and 26, he goes into a plural, Elohim, let us make man according to our image and after our 
likeness. Even God himself illustrates that even in creation, you are not alone, neither do you need to be alone. But there is power in unity. Even when God made Adam, it wasn't long before God decided that he needed to give him a complementary individual that will be a help meet. That literally means one who fits those places that he has voids. And so when we understand the fraternal order of humanity, we understand the need to embrace godly relationships. Now, please don't miss the adjective here, godly relationships. You see, we all have relationships, but all of our relationships might not be as godly as they need to be. So Paul reminds us in the first two words of Philippians 3.17 that we need to embrace the godliness in other people, that we need one another, that we are interdependent upon other people. Well, if you're going to live intentionally and have an intentional lifestyle, then you need to embrace the fact that I need to recognize my need for the God in other people. I don't have it all. I can't do it all to myself. I don't have everything it takes. I need other people in my life. There are a lot of people who live in isolation. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be Jesus Jr. or heaven's superstar on earth. No, just acknowledge the fact that I need godly relationships because godly relationships will push you in the right direction instead of pulling you in the wrong direction. Paul says, dear brothers, but then he continues by saying, pattern your lives after mine. Now, the second principle that we learn from Philippians 3 and 17 is that not only do we need to embrace godly relationships, but we also need to emulate godly role models, emulate godly role models. Notice what Paul says. He says, pattern your lives after mine. Now, let's remember that Paul is the one who has been ministering to them, the one who has established the church, the one who has been pouring into them in this entire book of Philippians. He's the one that is teaching them right doctrine and sound principles and how to walk in the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul is at a point where he's in prison, uncertain about his future, doesn't quite know what his outcome will be. And yet he is ministering to them with so much joy and hope and peace. And he's saying to them, follow me pattern your lives after mine. Now, one might say, well, why wouldn't Paul say pattern your lives after Christ? Well, indeed, to them, Paul was Christ's representation. He was the immediate representative, the immediate model of Christ at work in their lives. There's no, no, no wonder why in the book of Revelations, the seven letters that are addressed to the seven churches are addressed to the seven angels of the church. And the angel of the church is the pastor, the spiritual leader of the church. And so Paul could say to them, pattern your lives after mine, because he indeed was the pattern that they were to follow as he followed Christ. And so we are to emulate godly role models. We are to follow the pathway, the positive pathway that is, of godly role models. I shared a story with our church some years ago about a man who was struggling with alcoholism and he decided to take his son on a camping trip. And that particular time it snowed and this man who was a recovering alcoholic had a taste in his mouth that he had to soothe. He just had to get to some alcohol. Well, he discovered that within about 200 yards or so, there was a tavern that he could go to and get a drink. And he noticed that his little son was asleep and he said, I'll just go get this drink. I'll get my fix and I'll come back and no one will ever know. And as he goes to the tavern, to set up at the bar and he's ordering drink after drink. All of a sudden he looks behind him and his son has walked into the tavern and with his eyes wide open and with this shock and chagrin all over his face, he says to his son, what are you doing here? And how did you get here? How did you find me here? And listen to what the boy said. The boy said, 
I woke up and followed your footsteps. And that's how I got where I am. Listen to me closely. There are a lot of people and a lot of leaders who are not walking in God's pathway. Consequently, they are not a godly pattern. When you wake up, <laughs> and look at the footsteps of the people that you like and follow and all of that, will those footsteps lead you to a healthy, wholesome, and holy place? That's the question on the table that you must ask if you are going to live with intention and purpose in your life. You have to think about the footsteps that you leave behind because there's someone coming behind you who will follow your footsteps, good or bad. And we must make wise choices and we must emulate godly role models. We must be godly role models. And yet we must also follow only godly role models. Paul gives us a third principle in Philippians 3 and 17 that's very powerful. He says, dear brothers, pattern your lives after mine and notice who else lives up to my example. Don't miss that. Notice who else lives up to my example. Paul tells us, number three, that we must expect godly responsibility and maturity. Now, he tells us that we're to embrace godly relationships, that we're to emulate godly patterns, but thirdly, expect out of others godly responsibility and maturity. That's what he says in the bottom of Philippians 3 and 17 when he says, notice who else lives up to my example. Paul is not telling us to be a fruit inspector, but what Paul is telling us to do is to have expectations of others, that we should have expectations that they will do what is right, that they will follow God's example, that they will be a Paul in our life, who represents a mentor or a Timothy in our life, who represents a mentee, that the people in our circle should be held to a high standard and that there should be no excuses for not doing things God's way. And so Paul is not telling us to judge anyone. He's not telling us to necessarily be a fruit inspector, but what he is saying is be very intentional with those you allow into your inner circle and make sure that those who you follow and those who you lead, and most importantly, you yourself, <laughs> have an expectation of godly responsibility and maturity. Wow, that's a heavy teaching today, isn't it? Yet it's powerful because God wants us to live intentionally. And intentional living means that I don't just live any kind of way and I don't hang out with people that live any kind of way but I have an embrace of godly role models and I have an expectation of people following God's rules in my life. And then I myself make sure I am both following and creating tracks that will lead to wholesome, holy and healthy places. Well, that's our teaching for today. I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for my friends and for my family who are listening to this podcast or listening to this video. God, help us to leave tracks behind that others might follow us and end up in your presence. God, help us to be authentic. Help us to be true. Help us to be real. Help us to Prove that which is good. Help us to be great role models and to follow great examples in the faith. God, forgive us for every time that we have not been all we should. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purify our hearts and minds. Touch this world, this nation, presidents everywhere, governors, Senate leaders, House leaders, mayors, commissioners, city councilmen, touch everybody, Father. Those who've been, have been afflicted, would you just raise them up right now? Those who've experienced loss, we cover them now in the blood of Jesus. And we pray that you would do what only you can. And we give you praises, glory, honor in Jesus' name. 
amen and amen. Well, I really look forward to sharing these opportunities with you. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to comment. Make sure you're signed in when you comment so that your comments will show up on our YouTube channel. And those of you who are listening via the podcast, we thank God for you. Leave a comment. I'd love to know what you think about today's teaching. Hey, if you have a prayer request, I would love nothing greater than to pray with you and to pray for you. It's very simple. It is confidential. No one else knows about it, but you, me, and Jesus. It's very simple. Send me your prayer request to prayer with bishop at gmail.com. Again, that's prayer with bishop at gmail.com. And we know that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman makes much available. Also, if you would like to study with me, I'd love to invite you to join my e-class. That's right. It's going to start up. In fact, this week we're resuming and I provide free PDF study guides along with audio for you to listen and study the word of God so that you can get more and more out of your Bible study time. It's very simple. There's nothing to sign up for. Just send a quick email to me at clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com. And I will be more than happy to share with you from my years in the word of God. Well, as always, God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing this time for me. Do me a favor and hit that share button. I want others to find this resource, I think, and I believe you do too because you're there with me today, that this just might be a blessing in somebody's life as we go deeper together in God's word. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I appreciate you. Look forward to talking to you again real, real soon. Until then, you go with God and God will go with you.